Okay, so I'm going to talk real quick about um, just twins and dairy cattle. So um, dairy cattle actually have a twinning rate of about 2.5 to 5.8%. This is actually kind of high if you compare them back to beef cattle. Beef cattle are usually 1% um, or less. Um, there is, or there can be, a breed difference. One paper said Holsteins were the highest at 2.4 to 9.6 for twins. And then another paper was like, no, the Swiss are the highest at 8.6. Um, the first paper did point out that there's just more Holstein information. So because they're a larger population, more people probably report that their Holstein had twins than what um, the brown Swiss mice, since they're a smaller population. So that might not be accurate when you compare them back that way. And then age of cow also plays a role in whether or not she has twins. So your two-year-old heifer having her first calf is the least likely to have a twin. She's got about 1% chance. Whereas your, um, like a six-year-old cow going into her <coughs> lactation would have about a 10% chance of having twins. And just like in humans, um, they can be monozygotic or dizygotic. So monozygotic, as you guys probably know, it just comes from one egg that's been fertilized. Dizygotic, it's the most common for a livestock species, and that comes from two fertilized um, eggs. And then, are the twins good or bad for dairy? Um, industry overall considers them um, a bad thing. Um, if you look at this, I've got more bad up there than I have good up there. So just starting with the bad, um, they do have cows that have twins have more transition problems. So for a milking cow, um, she goes through a dry period, so towards the last two months of her pregnancy, um, we don't milk her at all. It allows her mammary tissue to break down and rebuild itself so she's ready for the next lactation. Um, this is shorter for cows that have twins. It's about two to three weeks shorter. So that's less time for that mammary tissue to redevelop. Um, if you don't know she's going to have twins ahead of time, she doesn't get as many nutrients as she would if she was carrying her calves to full term. So that can lead to a lot of um, metabolic issues like ketosis or milk fever. Um, dystocia is very high because you know you've got two calves trying to come out at the same time, so calving ease wouldn't be a very good thing. And then um, RP stands for retained placenta, so um, the placenta gets stuck in there and it doesn't always come out as easy as it would if she just had one calf. And then uh, twins cost to farm an average of $100 to $250 in losses, um, and that can do that leads in back into the, met the metabolic issues that the cow would have. Um, the twins are smaller, so they might have some kind of issues um, just getting started. Um, rebreeding, t cows that have twins are very hard to rebreed. Um, I know for ours, at least the last four cows that have twins, we've actually had to sell. Um, we just can't get them rebred back. One of our Swiss that had twins, her uterus never actually um, involuted, it never shrank back down, so it was physically impossible to get her bred back. But um, they have a longer days open, so in dairy, when your cow has a, kefir, a calf, you wait for about 60 days, it's called the voluntary waiting period, before you breed them back. This can stretch to like four or five months for a cow with twins, and then like for our cow, like her uterus just never shrunk back, so we couldn't get her bred. So because of this, they have a very high calling rate if they have twins. And then another bad is something called free martinism or free martin, which I'll come back to in a minute. And then for good, um, you do get more offspring, so you get two calves instead of one calf. Um, if you're running a feed lot and you don't really care if it's a bull, free martin, heifers, um, that might be good if you're just selling based on head. And then cows pregnant with twin fetuses actually had a higher 100-day milk weight than what cows with single with the single calf had. Now is that six pounds a day then? Yes. The increase? I think, yeah. Probably. It was six pounds a day, and then at yeah. the 100 day, it was six pounds overall. Or something like that. Okay. And then, so what is a free martin? A free martin occurs when your cow gives birth to a mix set of twins, so it's a bull calf and a heifer calf. And the heifer in that, in that set of twins is 92 to 98% infertile. You have a teeny tiny chance of getting her bred, but most farms just go ahead and sell her because there's no point in trying. <coughs> And the main reason for this is the increase in testosterone. So in utero, the male calf and the female calf both share a placenta, and they have a shared blood supply between the two. So the excess testosterone actually interferes with the development of what's called a surge center in the female's brain. And if you guys haven't taken repro yet, that basically tells the heifer calf that she's going to be a girl. So she gets some mixed signals. Some signals don't make it. So that can actually lead to deformalities. Okay, no, don't go on yet. It's actually not the same placenta. They, they each have a placenta. 
but the testosterone <laughs> from the male diffuses across to the female okay. and testosterone wrecks the reproductive tract. Okay. okay. So that's sure all it is. They don't share they don't have one placenta, they both have a placenta, but the testosterone in cattle somehow because of the structure of the placentas gets into the female, but it doesn't happen in sheep. Look at sheep have can have a male and female and you don't have that. Very rarely, I mean, you can get a free Martin and cheat, but it's not like very common. Somebody has a question? We're, we can't hear you anyway. <laughs> can you whisper to somebody like Delaney? And Is there a change in the thickness of the placenta? What's that? Is there a change in the thickness of the placenta? Oh, oh, yeah, in the sheet. Yeah, if there's a different, let's say the morphology is different, so testosterone cannot easily get from the male <coughs> to the female. People know better than me about the tissue layers, but it's something about tissue layers and how the placentas are formed in sheep. It's not very common for testosterone to get over there. If testosterone got over there, then you'd have a free Martin U. Does that do the same form? Um, it, well, you know, that's a good question. Does this happen in the same horn? It doesn't have to be the same horn because cattle can have one ovulation from the left, one from the right. And down at the bottom where there's a uterine body, the placentas are touching. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure you can get a free Martin from, let's say, a male on the left and a female on the right. Or it could be two ovulations from the same ovary. Then they'd be more like in one big horn on one side. For sure they'd be. It's like they're touching. There's no, no way to stop them from touching. And the testosterone diffuses. No, just in general have the same order, so. Oh, oh, in general. Well, you're asking me. Then you've got to look back at the uh, where the ovulation occurs. Because in cattle, wherever the ovulation occurs, that's where the pregnancy occurs. They don't really. They can't really migrate to the other horn because then pregnancy would not be maintained. Because remember, if you do a uh, embryo transfer, you have to put the embryo in ipsilateral to the CL. So, some. I'm sure some of the twins are one in one. But some of the twins are two on one side. I don't. I'm sure somebody's got a percent. I don't. Okay. And then um, because of that, also, um, if your cow has a mixed set of twins and she aborts, let's say the male, um, that female is still infertile because this all happens very early in. So you're still likely to use your lose your female calf. And then for some pictures. So left over here is normal. So that's looking down from her back over her reproductive tract, and then. This is just her, no, her hind end. And over Vulva. here. Yeah. Say it. And then over here. <laughs> <laughs> over here for the freight mark, you can see there's an increased distance between her vulva and her rectum, which isn't good. Um, good. This one's got two parts going on. <coughs> That's definitely not normal. And then the most common is just the internal tract. It's just not the same. Right. So. so there is, from the day of birth, you can actually detect a free mark heifer. One of the common ones is is to put a test tube into the vulva, into the vagina. And I'm not sure what size test tube, but if it's a normal heifer, it would be inserted normally. But if it's a free martin, it's like, if you've done enough of them, you go, okay, this is a free martin. And then you just My dad raise it for beef. where it's just like a little bitty pinprick. Right, yeah, you either raise it for beef mm -hmm. or sell it to somebody that's gonna raise it for beef. Because yeah. there's nothing really genetically wrong with a heifer with free martin. It's not her fault, right? No. Because if the bull wouldn't have been there, She'd be normal. And then, just for fun, they can have triplets and quadruplets too. Um, they're not limited to twins. So your chance of triplets is about one in a hundred thousand, and then your chance for the same um, sex for quads is about one in a million. And if you want a mix of quads, it would be about one in a hundred and eighty million wow. for to get those. And then, questions. Very rare. And there's those beautiful calf hutches, they call them. Yes, those you are You got a question over here. Yes. Um, for the cow or the semen in which the cow was fertilized with, is there any genetic correlation to free martinism? For? From the cow or the bull. I think it would just be in the placenta. No, it's, no, it's just by it. chance. Yeah. If you got two bulls, there's no problem. Two heifers, oh, okay. no problem. I see. No, I'm just no. about the parents. Yeah, yeah, the parents don't have, have anything really to do with it. Because remember, who determines the sex of the offspring? Yeah. The sperm. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of that egg got fertilized by a, a Y or an X. So there's nothing genetic about it. You know, <coughs> nothing about the mother or dad. Huh? It's just wrong with the dice, I guess. <coughs> are these yours? Yes. Okay. So I Pretty. cheated. Those aren't actually twins. But okay, yeah. But <laughs> they were born on the same day, and we had to put them in the right. same hutch for about right. a week. And you so. like calf hutches, don't you? Yeah. 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 We like calf 
questions? Other questions? Excellent topic.